this is possibly a mixed bag. Um, has to do with media, mostly, I suppose, having to do with cabling, but not exclusively. Um, so, uh, a, a number of um, different uh, problems uh, with uh, say, often associated with cabling, but uh, get, we'll get some uh, counter examples in here. Anyways, to do with um, problems, security problems with your network. Uh, generally speaking, a local area network, but again, uh, you know, some of these issues uh, carry over into other communications situations. Um, I suppose uh, I didn't uh, get time uh, last time to talk about excessive cable lengths, and I can remember this uh, uh, very very clearly. Um, now, I, I did talk about um, the uh, improper cable lengths and, and not paying attention to the um, half wavelength and uh, those considerations with regard to network cabling. The, um, this is a little bit different, but there are standards with, with regard to uh, the cabling um, as to, you know, maximum cable lengths. Uh, for example, Ethernet. Um, I believe uh, somewhere between 1,100 and 1,500 meters um, is the maximum uh, end-to-end -end length of a, an Ethernet network, and that has to do with um, the collision detection uh, aspect of it. The... Um, uh, but this is this is a little uh, different. There are in in other situations um, similar uh, restrictions. Um, now I, guess, uh, I suppose I should back up with the Ethernet. That's that's coax cable that we're talking about. Um, when you go to twisted pair, um, that changes the the maximum cable length. Of the drop it down. Um, so again, you know, a different medium. Um, you have uh, different uh, limitations, and and you should be uh, paying attention to those. Now, um, one of them is RS-232. I don't know if uh, very many of you even remember that. RS-232 um, is or used to be the uh, serial uh, communications cable, and. Uh, we would use it for modems, we would use it for terminal connections, we would use it for a number of different things. The, um, the uh, maximum length for an RS-232 cable is um, uh, 50, 50 feet, I believe it is. And uh, I was uh, asked to uh, troubleshoot a situation they had uh, put in um, IBM uh, mainframe terminals. Um, and because it was on an IBM mainframe computer that they were dealing with, and we had uh, various connection issues with regard to the fact that it was um, uh, packet assembly and disassembly and X25 and, and that sort of thing. Um, but the uh, they were having all kinds of problems, um, and primarily because uh, IBM terminals at the time were primarily block-oriented. You needed to have all the data that was going to be dis displayed on the screen, and it would download blocks in order to set up a screen. It would send, transmit blocks after you had filled in all the forms on the screen. So, um, anything that went wrong could mess up a lot of data. And so they were having problems. And uh, I looked at the office um, where they had the terminals installed. And I looked uh, at the machine room that they had connected to the uh, packet assembler disassembler and told them, look, I think you 
have a problem here because your um, cable lengths are getting close to that 50 foot limit. And they said, no, um, those cables aren't 50 feet long, they're 300 feet long. They had uh, decided that since, you know, they didn't know, they, they might want to move somebody to a different office, that when they pulled a the cable, they just, uh, you know, put as you know long a cable as they could build uh, into that space. And uh, nobody had paid attention to the fact that this was over limit. And as a matter of fact, um, when I went into the machine room, uh, as was common in those days, it had a raised floor, and the, you know, you, you took up the tiles on the floor. Uh, well, they called the space under the floor the snake pit, and you could certainly see why when you took a tile up. It did, uh, you know, you just saw coils and coils and coils of cable, and I was <laughs> rather certain that if you took out all the supports for the raised floor, the floor would still stay there because it would be resting on all that cable. And of course they had all these coils of cable sitting beside each other, across each other. So of course, you know, there were aspects of noise. Um, there were, you know, it was quite clear why they would have problems with that. And, and basically at that point I just said to them, look, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. You're going to have to live with the fact that you are going to see a lot of errors. Uh, don't know uh, what they did. Anyway, um, so when you're when you're dealing with cables, of course, you have to uh, consider the possibility of tapping somebody tapping into your line if if the cable is exposed at any point. And an awful lot of companies um, are now running. Uh, any kind of cabling uh, for digital systems through um, the uh, through conduit, so that um, the areas where the cables are exposed are you know few and far between, and and we can um, hope that uh, we don't see uh, too many opportunities for people to to actually tap into the cable. Um, in regard to this, we have to think about the, the concept of a covert channel. And I believe we've uh, talked about this before. Uh, part of the system that can be used to signal information, even though it, it should not be allowed to signal information. And of course, um, in terms of cabling, we've got um, the fact that you don't actually have to physically tap into the cable. You can uh, read the uh, electrical transmissions that are going on within the cable if you've got the right time kind of uh, gear to to do that um, so and and of course if we're dealing with wireless you know we are broadcasting it is the ultimate promiscuous network and that's why we have more um, uh, cryptographic protection for local area networks when we're dealing with wireless rather than cables stuff. And of course you've got, uh, you know, when you're dealing with tapping, you're also dealing with interception, not only interception, but the possibility of intercepting the traffic and then um, replacing the traffic, interfering, modifying, injecting your own traffic into uh, the system. So all of these, are areas that we have to be concerned about, that we have to address depending on our media and our physical communication system.